Hey y'all, my time at Sandrock is finally here. I'm so, so excited to see how this game grows over its time in early access. I was lucky enough to get a look at the game early so I could gather up some tips and tricks to help you get started in Sandrock. Please note that these tips and tricks are from the early days of early access, so some of these might have changed once the game either fully launches or just spend some significant time in early access. And while I personally don't think any of these tips are spoilers, if you are very much concerned about spoilers, it might be worth it to play the game for a few hours and then come back and check out these tips. And with that being said, let's get started. This first tip is a farming sim slash life sim game tip overall, but it especially applies here. Use all of your stamina every day in the early days if you can mine things, collect things, harvest, etc. so you can have a nice stockpile of stuff to help you out down the road. You can pick and choose what gets researched when with the data disks. I'd suggest saving up eight of the data disks to get the dew collector early on as water is a very precious resource in this game. Build a second recycler machine ASAP. You use it so often to break down the scrap that you get that getting a second one is a must have so you can continually get the resources you need. Use dregs for your fuel source early on at least in the game so you don't waste things like wood or power stones to fuel your machines as you get a lot of the dregs uh, while just gathering stuff especially early on. Different friendship levels with people will unlock different perks. After you meet someone and they get added to the social menu, you can view their related perks. Just click on the character and on the right hand side, you'll see a series of tabs. Click on the furthest right one to see what the perks are. This will help you plan whose friendship you want to make sure that you rank up to get the perks that you want and or need. If you don't get enough sleep and don't head to bed by midnight, you're going to wake up with dark circles around your eyes and the more that you do that, literally the worse it gets. So make sure to get yourself a good night's sleep. And pass out time is 3am. If you pass out, the only penalty is, well, getting the dark eyes and possibly an irritatingly boisterous letter from Penn. You can add and remove a variety of things from your house and your property overall at Heidi's store, which is located next to Town Hall. Make sure that you save first in case you dislike your changes. Also, it's important to note that if you want to do something like move your door or change where your light is on your house, you do have to be in that section of the menu in order to do so. You see that light bulb that's trying to get your attention under your hotbar? That's a reminder that you have knowledge points to spend, which is the equivalent of skill trees for this game. So make sure you go ahead and spend them. You don't have to have your items in your hand or even in your hotbar to use them to assemble stuff on your assembly station. It's literally just a walk up to it and the game will pick up that you have it. You can even have the item in a chest and it'll recognize it, which means it's super easy to get your projects finished now. Which means then, you guessed it, there is actually cloud storage in this game. You can store whatever you want in the storage chest and the various crafting machines will pick up that you have those resources, so there's no need to hold on to everything in your inventory. Now speaking of storage, all of the chests are linked, so you can view all of them in a single chest and then tuck the extra ones that you don't want showing away somewhere like your house or just kind of off to the side. You can also rename each of the chests in order to keep everything organized, and you can also change the color of them. However, if you do decide to change the color of them, they require an additional resource. Upgrading your backpack is by individual slots. You can upgrade a single slot whenever you'd like to. Now, the first page of the backpack is 10 gold per a slot, and it goes up from there once you unlock a full page's worth per a page. So page two's individual slots are a new price and then page three and etc. You can save your game at any point. You can even rename your save files once you've actually made the save file. However, it is worth noting that if you want to make a brand new save and not overwrite a pre-existing save, you do have to click one of the free slots in order to save it. Otherwise, it will just overwrite a current save file. Most of the big time cutscenes will actually have an image saved to your photo album. You can use that image to replay the cutscene whenever you'd like, and you can even have it re-recorded if you want to have your updated appearance to go along with the cutscene. 
To change out clothing or accessories, simply go to your character menu and then hit the item that you want to change out. You'll see that ones you have to swap it out for. You can also hit the circle with a line through it in order to remove anything from that slot. Once you get to town, talk to people ASAP. A lot of them will give you free gifts when you talk to them for the first time and all of that can come in very handy. If you're looking to build or craft something at your work table and you can't find it in there, head over to the Commerce building where Jan is located and see if it's sold at the tiny kiosk there. Once you buy it, you do auto learn it and can build it ASAP. There are chests hidden throughout the area, but most of them are really tucked away or hidden really well. So make sure that you're looking around the various areas and buildings and different rooms, etc., both inside and out. And after collecting your loot from those chests, you can actually use your axe to break down the chests to gather wood from them after you get your items. The abandoned ruins are actual ruins, which is insanely cool in my opinion. However, that does mean in order to progress further and further into the mines, you do need to find the door or opening that will let you in. You can always go back to a previous area and even reset the current area that you're in so you can remine it for whatever resources you need. On that same note, when in the ruins, you can open up your map and either quick travel to the start of the mines or leave them that way so there's no need to backtrack in order to exit or get somewhere else. You'll find pieces of trash on the ground. It's worth picking them up both for the small amount of XP you get and for the material that you will get from it as well. Plus, this doesn't use up your stamina. There is a salon slash style parlor, but it isn't unlocked right away, so there's no need to worry about keeping your builder's appearance the same throughout the whole game. However, it is worth it to spend a few minutes in the character creator as it'll be a bit before you can access it. As mentioned earlier, water is literally one of the most precious resources in Sandrock, and you need it to keep your machines going. So make sure you stay on top of your water tank levels and collecting water. You can turn dew into water at your work table, and you can also purchase water if need be. Items that you pick up that aren't usable right away, such as crafting ingredients, materials, etc., aren't auto-added on into your hotbar. So before you worry that you didn't pick up an item, double check that it isn't already sitting in your inventory. You can of course move whatever you want into or out of your hotbar when you're in your inventory screen. It is also worth noting that items that are in your hotbar are already separately shown in your inventory. And when gathering or kicking items, there is no need to hold down the interact button or hit it repeatedly. Just hit the button once and your character does the rest. And those are just a few tips and tricks to get you started in Sandrock. I hope you have a fantastic time during the early access experience. And if you'd like to see some gameplay footage, you can also check out my Let's Play here on the channel that I'll link in the description of this vid. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.